to Jay Jake Jackets. Gear up to fire the cannon and hit the ice with your host, Jay Ashdown and Jake Gehringer. Sick. The, the Buttes game? Yeah. It was unbelievable. Because, so, like, it, they played, it was, it was over at Riverworks, which is a really nice place. Yeah. Great restaurant. But, like, they also have, like, the, the place in the back, the, the, a couple of rinks. So, like, it's outdoors, but they have, oh. like, but they have a roof over the top of it to, like, protect the ice. So, it's, like, kind of fun. Like, mostly outdoor. Um, so, and, but the weather was gorgeous. It was like 45 degrees. So like, and it was sunny. So Dude, it, it was wasn't like cold. 60 here yesterday. <laughs> yeah. It was like, like, you ever see that meme where it's like spring? Is that you playa? Yeah. <laughs> no, it's great. But it's, it's like sucks because it's like every, like we get days like that where it's like, oh my God, it's beautiful out. And then it's followed immediately by two absolute dog shit days that you just wake up and you just feel depressed because you look outside and i'm looking and i still see a little bit of snow on the ground but it's just raining it's slushy and like 30 degrees and Uh, it's the worst (laughs) it's the worst man but dude i'm I'm happy like the only thing i'll say is that i'm happy that ohio is not the only state that's like that true true no Definitely. No, we, we get that shit here too. But but anyway, the, the the game was was unbelievable. Carly Jackson got her first ever career shutout. She stopped oh. 36 against the, the best team in the league. Wow. I mean they're, they're Carly. The, the Toronto Six are unbelievable. That they, they had well, so yeah. many chances, but like they just couldn't find the, the back of the net because she's locked in and it was, it was great. It was, it was it was an unbelievable time. I'm glad you had a lot of fun, man. Uh, Thank you. So, like I haven't gone to a game since my birthday for anything. Oh, really? Yeah. So I haven't been yeah, to a Blue Jackets game. Balls. I haven't. Yeah. Catch a Buttes game. <laughs> if I can make a way up to Buffalo, maybe. <laughs> Just it's a simple drive, isn't it? You know, it's good. What, like two hours? Mm. Yeah, no, from, from where you're at, God, that show kind of be like five plus, right? Well, you know, I don't drive either, so. Oh, yeah, I didn't think about that. <laughs> anyway, um, <laughs> three games we called one thing in our very last episode because we haven't done an episode since previewing the calgary game and the Tapoli trade um yeah we're, we're both like oh yeah Tapoli's definitely gonna score tonight and, and then he scored the very last goal and i was like god damn it <laughs> you know i i don't think i said it but you know what i had a weird gut feeling about mm. i just had a weird gut feeling that good branson was gonna score too and then he did, and he <laughs> we, we just, we just man, like, why do they always give up goals to Eric and Branson? What the hell is their deal with that? I have no idea, <laughs> dude. I mean, they always give up like first NHL goals. It's like them and the Maple Leafs do that all the time. Ridiculous with that. First goals with new teams, you know. I called that part, <laughs> right? With the Toffoli goal. <laughs> Dude, it's like good. Branson's like actually been better this year. Like, he, he's still not great defensively, but like his, his offense is in the 72 percentile this year. Oh, wow. Um, I think I know who's keeping your Kepi. I don't think that we need to like be absurdly creative with this. It's easy, like, well, I mean. For me, it's pro- it's somebody that hasn't gotten one yet. You're gonna give it to Kukin? I'm giving it to Kooks. Okay. Well, I'm gonna give it to Jet Greaves. No, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, congrats to Jet on yeah, no. signing his ELC. Like, yeah, yeah. 
I don't know. Like, like if we're doing over the last three games, like, I, like I hate to sound like a pro good record, but I mean, I think I'm going to give it the hat trick line. Eh? Hattie, Hattie, over a point per game now. I mean, I just like, what was the, the statistic that they showed? Like, it was like since like some point in January, it's like over like the last like three weeks or so. Yeah. He's leading the NHL in goals and points. Uh, yeah. He's literally like, after his second goal, because the hat trick came against Chicago. Um, <laughs> after his after his second goal, you texted me. You were like, "Bro, it's official. Patty's back. Pay the man." <laughs> yeah. and, I you, and I was just like, "Blank check, please." Yes. No. Seriously, do it. I mean, this is exactly what we wanted to see out of him, and this is exactly what we knew he was capable of. It, you know, everybody knew he was capable of this. Mm-hmm. His issue has been consistency throughout the course of his career, but there's no doubt about it. When he's on like this, he's one of the nastiest players in the league. Oh yeah, he's a threat everywhere, and we and we know he has his specific spots. You know. Because it's not like he invented the OV spot. It's right. just he uses it. <laughs> yeah. He's using it really well. And he can score from anywhere. Like, I mean, well, yeah. he could probably score from the from center ice with this shot. But <laughs> honestly, like, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's unbelievable. But, dude, this team's red hot. Uh, yeah. Red hot. Patrick Wine, Patty Patty, Paid Man. Uh, what else can you say? And then Kukan with his first two career goals again, or first two goal game, first two career goals. You can tell I'm tired. <laughs> so this team has won five of the last six and seven of the last nine. They're on a bit of a roll. They're on a bit of a tear, man. I mean, they're just this is what happens when you get Patrick Line going now. You know, I, I don't anticipate that they're going to be the Leafs tonight because a the Leafs are one of the best teams in the league, and b they got their asses handed. They're coming off of probably fashion. their yeah. It's easily their worst loss of the season. So I don't know I, if you I, watched. I doubt that the Leafs are going to take that lightly. And well, I haven't heard a thing from my two friends since. Uh, like, I didn't even hear a word about the game. They probably, like, I texted you. They probably turned it off after 3 nothing. And, uh, man, did you watch the LFR? No. It's a rough I watch. I will. It's a rough it's... watch. I'm just going to warn you. <laughs> it's a rough watch. Like, hilarious because he screams a lot or just, like, not funny? Just, like, mm like part of you feels bad and part of you is like okay pump the brakes a bit and it's just like i don't know it just it made my brain feel weird <laughs> so i'm looking at this team right they have won five of the last six as i mentioned but then i also look at it and i'm like okay well four of those wins are buffalo on the road buffalo at home mm-hmm. chicago and montreal <laughs> Right, exactly. They're not um, the most, yeah. And then teams, I'm looking their teams at, if you should be. From, right, if you're going seven of the last nine, you also have another win against Montreal. The only two quality wins, I would say, were the home win against the Rangers and the road win against the Capitals. Yes. And then I'm looking at their next four games where they're playing Toronto, Florida, Carolina, and Pittsburgh. Yeah, this is going to be a wild, ugh. So, look, I'm enjoying the fact that they crazy. are – uh, above 500, they're 25, 23, and 1. Um, if they can take one of these next four games, I think I'll be okay with it. Yes. One of the next four will keep you at 500. I would rather it be Pittsburgh because it's divisional or Carolina, but you know what I mean? You know what? Like, this is personal? My personal preference would be in division, but like... Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I can deal with losing to Toronto, Carolina, and Pittsburgh. This is mm-hmm. personal with Florida. <laughs> yes, it is. It's very personal, personal. with Florida now. <laughs> God. I am not looking forward to that game. You want to make a score prediction for that right now? I'm going to say 10 Yeah, sure. I'm going to go uh, Panthers. You know what? 
we're actually going to shut them down defensively. They're only going to get six goals against us this time. <laughs> Is it going to be 6-3? We're going to lose that one 6-3. <laughs> I'm going to say 10-1. <laughs> Good fucking God. If they get they're, their 10th. <laughs> they're a joke. Ugh. It's ridiculous. It's crazy. And, I mean, we know what the expectations for Columbus are this year. Mm-hmm. So it's not like we're expecting much to come out of this next stretch if we're being realistic. No, no. because I mean that stretch is immediately followed by you know back to you know you have a game against New Jersey which you should be able to win. Yeah. Uh, I'd say LA is a toss up. I'd say LA is better than us, but you know I mean, it's a winnable game. Yeah. Then you got Boston and Toronto. Mm. Well, Boston. Eh. Oh, here's the thing. Boston's so damn inconsistent. That's the game that the Blue Jackets could win because Boston would lose to a team like the Blue Jackets and then immediately follow up by just absolutely hammering like a really good team. Right. Would Don't they – like, will they have Marshan back by then? Do you know? They should. They should? Oh, great. Um, one, two, three. How long was this, this suspension? Six games. Has it started yet? Because they played Colorado yesterday. Well, he's not getting it appealed. So I'm assuming yes. Okay, because then they got so they got Seattle, San Jose, LA, Vegas, and Anaheim before that. So that would I would assume that'd be his first game back. Oh great. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> but no, like man, I'm looking at this shit, man. Like with Boston, it's like holy shit, like they got absolutely hammered. Um, maybe not like in, in in the scoreboard four to one by the islanders but they did not play well um you know they, they, they struggled with mm-hmm. ottawa they, they, they've had, they've been so inconsistent in games lately lost anaheim it's going to be interesting to see what they, they do just against... murdered colorado five to one <laughs> right Oof. um it's gonna be interesting to see what columbus does against toronto tonight especially because like you know now they don't have Muzzin for mm-hmm. a very long time. Yes. Which is very unfortunate. Yeah. No, Muzz, Muzzin's so important in so many different ways for them. Mm-hmm. Um, just, just even like the culture, just the, the, the culture of trying to get winning in that room. Well, yeah. I know he hasn't been his typical self. Like we've seen his, his numbers – uh, especially his his defensive numbers drop this year it's still a huge loss he it's, eats minutes yes and, and now it's like so you have high. yeah you have power play specialist he is your shutdown guy um it's gonna be really tough to just not have like that one piece right mm-hmm I have a feeling they're going to come out with a vengeance tonight, like really bad. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, it's... here's here's the thing for for Leafs fans to, to give them to make them feel a little bit better. Okay. You know, you see you know, Mo, Mo's there as always. Mm-hmm. Mo's awesome. Um, Riley Brody's going to be untouched. I would assume. I know TJ Brody's numbers defensively have also dropped this year, but he's still reliable. The the big thing here's the thing. And this is how you always said, this is how coaches will always view things like this happening. Mm-hmm. Injuries are unfortunate. Yes. You, know, you, you always hate to see injuries and stuff like that, but they yes. always provide opportunity. Um, he has played in sheltered third defensive pairing minutes, but the results this year that you've been seeing specifically offensively from Rasmus Sandin have been unbelievable. Yes. So this is a really good opportunity to see. I, this is an opportunity to, to give him legitimate minutes and see how legit it is. Because, you know, like I said, he's playing sheltered third pairing minutes. Yes. You know, they're, they're, they're making things as easy as possible on him. If you throw him out there to the wolves a little bit and he plays well, you definitely got something. Yeah. Um, this is a huge test for the Sandman. Mm-hmm. Um, but I mean, also, like, I mean, their defense, like, I mean, you look at who, look at all the defensive, like, left hand shots they got besides 
Muzzin. I mean, like I said, Mo, you got Sandine, TJ Brody. I was going to say, Turner. yeah. Uh, Travis is, mm, he's okay. So like we can talk <laughs> more, we can talk more about Travis when we get to actual deadline stuff, I guess. But Travis is kind of in the doghouse a little bit. It's like they don't know what to do with him. Which is strange because, like, I feel like generally speaking, he can be inconsistent throughout the course of a season. But, like, the general results you get from Travis on a year-to-year basis, just looking at his numbers, they're the same. So 19, 67%. The next year, 68%. The next year, sadly, not 69%. But the, the, uh, this year, it's 71%. So like, um, his so it's increasing dipped. like little by little, but yeah, but his his defense is dipped, but his offense is is, is skyrocketed. So, um, I I think it's just a change of identity because that's that's something we're seeing with a lot of Leafs defensemen is their defensive yeah. numbers are dropping, but their offensive numbers are going up. So kind of like what's happening with Columbus's guys. <laughs> yes. Now, I don't know if that's just a total shift in how they've played because I don't think that they've really changed too much of their strategy. But No. Um, but you also, I mean, this is another reason that you bring in Ilya from, from the Coyotes. We'll talk about Labushkin here in a minute. Uh, so to just get back on the Columbus train real quick, two seven-goal games, what the hell happened other than Patrick Lyon? Um, well, here, here's the thing, and I don't want to say this and rally anybody up by trying to take any credit away from them per se, um, because it's two seven goal games, like, like that's not it's not a coincidence, like they, they're, they're putting the puck in the net, right? But it's Chicago and it's Buffalo, but still, exactly, exactly. It's Chicago with it, it's here's the thing, it's Chicago, and you're facing. This poor kid. Um, oh, that's right. It was Soderblom. Marvin Soderblom. I forgot that it was even Soderblom. Like it wasn't even like Flurry or Lankinen. No. It is and this, this this poor kid was uh, was it his, his second career start? I think it was. Oh yeah. Mm. Yeah. He made his first start against Calgary, allowed four goals and 41 shots. Really no shame in that at all, because one, it's Calgary until he faced 41 shots. But, yeah, this, this poor kid is, has not been given much help. You know, the, no. the Blackhawks are not a good defensive team at all. So mm-hmm. Jones was minus two that night. Um, just want to throw that out there. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, it, it's just things are not going well for them. Uh, like you even every like- aspect, man. Hockey, defense, goaltending, off injuries, ice, PR. <laughs> I was good. Yeah, um, like <laughs> the Derek King shift helped to start, but that's you know the new coach boost happens with most teams. It happens in just about it. You have to be a terrible coach if you don't get that boost. Um, <laughs> <laughs> speaking, like I mean, it, it only lasts for so long. And then, and then you really see how good of a coach you are. And I'm not trying to like dog on Derek King. Like, like he's in, a, he's in. A, an unfortunate spot he's in a tough spot i mean look at what happened with adrian burnett it's like the same it's polar opposite right yeah but i mean like you know you know it, it does go into like the old uh the old saying what makes a good coach good right. players and yeah, florida's loaded chicago yeah. is very not chicago so, has you know they have their the own they have their old pieces they have talent uh, you know, like yeah, Kane. The, Kane's the always been Kane. To bring it, um, Kat, Kat and Strom are gonna be um, like you know, like as much as we dog on Dylan Strom, he's had a renaissance. This year. I don't think we dog on him. He's a good player. Um, you know, I don't know. He, he's one of our old honor kids. Yeah, Cat you know, and Strom and Travis. And, right. It's gonna be interesting to see what they do with him at the deadline because I've heard they might trade him. But but like still, no, Kubalik is a, is a good Kubalik piece. is very good. Um, Kurashev's looked fine. Kurashev has has been very interesting for them. Bra- Brandon Hagel, I think is Hagel's is looked awesome, and I'm surprised that they're shopping him. Yeah. Um, 
God, you got to figure out what you want to do with Kirby Doc. Oh, yeah, poor That's Doc. Good. God. I feel bad for Doc. Uh, talk for a second. I'm going to be out for like two seconds. I'm getting getting a refill. Fair enough. Sure. But so, so like I said, for um, the, the Blackhawks, it, it's very interesting with their future some of these pieces and, and as we go for for the blue jackets and just look at them in their last two games when he has the question of like you score 14 goals in two games you have seven in both um you don't want to take any credit away from them but it is the, it is the blackhawks it is the sabers and yes. i think that that does factor in because you're facing this poor kid in his second career start behind an awful defense and then you're mm-hmm. facing um 90 year old craig anderson all <laughs> oh, right <laughs> poor guy <laughs> um who's also behind a bad defense so it's a combination of weak competition with with you know way below average goaltending in that mm-hmm. and you know patrick Lane is going off but also just like it, it, who else is going off in these games you know you mentioned in in the buffalo game the th- who were two of the three stars you know, obviously, Barube got one of the stretches, which good for him. Yay! Yeah, I love that. Um, but that was his first NHL win since 2018, and it's only his 10th career win. Yeah, and good for him. He deserves it. But who were the two other stars in that game? Well, you mentioned one. He was your capi. He won your capi keeper. Dean Coogan had two goals and assists. The other guy, I mean, I, uh, new owner of the Buffalo Sabres, Brendan Gaunt, had a goal and two assists. <laughs> like you know brendan gaunt's like i mean do you do you, how do you project that he's gonna go off like that no you can never project no. that like that's gonna go off like that but but look at the goal scorers you you're, you don't project that you're gonna get three points out of kukin or gaunt's but you know jenner puts in a goal i Lorensky mean puts in a goal nyquist those are guys that you expect though yeah you know, Dan Forth had a goal, granted, with four seconds left in the game, but still, like... Good for Justin, eh? Yeah. So, I mean, it's interesting. Like, like to... I, I put more... I put more into their, their offensive outpour just in general and how this team is in a Chicago win. Because it, the, the Buffalo win was awesome because you saw depth pieces step up, which was great. Right. You want to see that. But the stars, sh- you know, they showed up in, in Chicago. Boone Jenner... Yegor with a goal. Yes. You know, Domi, a uh, hat trick from, from Patrick Lyon, and the other goal is from, from uh, Oliver. So, like, the Chicago. I just got everything yeah. you'd want to see in that game from, from, from your top guys. I well, mean, it was, and then the Buffalo Nyquist one you get to see from your bottom guys because, you know, Corrali scored. Um, or no, wait, he assisted on Gus's, I think. Mm-hmm. And, but yeah, you got like, everything you wanted out of those two games and then everything you didn't want out of the Calgary game. <laughs> yeah. I mean, but, but both, so, so Patty had the half trick. Boone had three points in the Chicago game. Nyquist had two. Domi had two. Wierenski had two. Gavrikov had two. Chinikov had two. Like, it looked good, man. I don't put a lot of stock into the Calgary loss because Calgary is a good team, a really right. good team. Um, and this team has, has, you know, unsurprisingly struggled with really good teams. They allowed 41 shots on the road at Calgary, which is a significant improvement from the 59 they allowed at home. Um, or what, what was it? 59 or was 62. It, 60? it was 62. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so it's a significant improvement. So good for them. <laughs> um, um, Yeah. This is going to be a, a really interesting stretch. I really like, I think, would you call this next stretch season defining? Um, yeah. And, and I think the way that you, you go into it. So, so, okay. So let, let's, let's define the stretch. Toronto, Florida, Carolina, Pittsburgh. They're New all Jersey. playoff contenders. LA, Boston, Toronto. So so let's go. So let, let's see here. One, two, three, four, six, seven, eight. So your next eight games, okay? Mm-hmm. Toronto, Florida, Carolina, Pittsburgh, 
mm-hmm. LA, Boston, Toronto. Seven of those next eight games are against teams that are either A, in a playoff spot and have essentially locked it up, or, right. or in the one case with LA. And I, I and I guess maybe you could say Boston, but I think Boston's basically locked it up. Boston but but LA, play. they're battling for a spot, so it's big for them, and they're they're a pretty solid team. Right. So seven of your next eight games, those are good teams you're playing. Um, let's see how they do. They're and, all and playoff contenders, goes, and you know Columbus is in flux. Mm-hmm. It's it's more. We've said that this is more of a retool than a full scale rebuild. Um, so, like you know, like it's I said, with because it's, yeah, it's a toss up. It's it's tough because I I you know here's the thing, man. If they do well on this stretch, then wouldn't that be something? It would definitely show that they're better off than you know than we expected. Exactly. But if they struggle, at the end of the day, they're still they're still above expectations for the season, and they'd be struggling in games that you expect them to struggle against. So you so you right. don't hit the panic button on that. You just say, okay, this team still has a ways to go, but that's yeah. okay. That's all it is. So this this next eight game stretch is a really good opportunity to see where this team is at. It's a really good opportunity, oh, yeah. and regardless of what whatever the the results are. It's going to be exciting as a fan just to, to see where they're at because there's still so much for even if they are good, there's still so much further they could go because think about the guys that you have on the way. Right. There's some really good prospects coming up on the way in the next couple of years. So guys that we've already seen too, like what you know, uh Trey got his taste. Of- mm-hmm. Uh Gaunt is getting his taste, which I don't know if you see Gaunt's being a part of things. As I mean, I would, of, I would like, consider him a prospect. Not really. Not at all. How old is he? Oh, he's like 28, I think. Yeah. But like, I mean, th- think about it. So guys who we've seen, like, we still don't know what we have in Foodie, but he's still mm-hmm. going to be a part of this organization mm-hmm. for a couple of years, I'd imagine. Right. Unless, unless they use him as a trade piece, but I, I think he's going to be around for a bit. But, but Trey... Trey's interesting. Mm-hmm. Tarasov. Um, Tarasov is definitely an interesting piece. But also just guys that we haven't seen. You know, we I talk all the time about Kent Johnson, Corson Coleman's. Um we get uh Stan Svozel. Stanislav, yes. Uh Marchenko, Veronka. I like him a lot. All those yeah. guys. God, I cannot wait for Marchenko. He's gonna be <laughs> Um, yeah, they've got some really good prospects yeah. that are very exciting. It's it's nice that the pool is, you know, useful. I forget who it was. One of, like, the top, like, draft analysts, um, he, like, comes out every year with, like, the rankings of, like, prospect pools for each team. He had like the Blue Jackets like a couple years ago at 30, and then like last year at 29th. This season, uh-huh. he moved them all the way up to sixth. I'm down with that. Oh, yeah. I think I did read this. Yes. I, I can't remember. I can't remember who it was, but it, it, it's someone that like I trust with it. Generally. Right. Like a Dragger or a, someone like that. Maybe. Not like that big of a name, but. Someone who's like really good with like draft day stuff. Like the only time you really hear for them is around like the draft. Fair enough. Uh, yeah, a uh, big stretch. See how they go, and it starts against the Leafs tonight. Um, I say tonight, but we'll see when I get this posted. <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean, I'm excited to see how well they do tonight. I'm not going in with crazy high expectations if they win cool scott wheeler oh okay yeah scott wheeler yep there it is so yeah scott, scott wheeler had them in 2020 at 31st last year 27th my bad and then this year it's sixth so huge jump but they, no i yeah. trust scott wheeler so i'm excited about that but anyway with with toronto it'll be i'm not going with crazy high expectations but um 
We'll be interested to see. I'm just I'm more interested just to see their style of play, how they respond to certain things that happen in a game. I'm looking for growth out of this team. Right. More than anything. Yes. You know, if if they play solid games where they're not getting outshot a ton. And, you know, they look like they're getting some good entries, getting good scoring chances, not allowing stupid plays. Defensively. Sustaining pressure. Sustaining pressure. If they're doing those things and they go like two, five, and one in this stretch, I can live with it. Mm-hmm. I can. I can absolutely live with that. I care more about the actual play than I do the results. Right. Because I think it'll say, it, it'll say a lot about Brad Larson because I know that we've kind of gone back and forth on him where we, we started off really well and we were like, look, you know, this is great. You know, Lars has these boys planned and then they struggle. And it's like, God, he's got to get them out of the slump. And now, they're, and now we're back on up again. And yeah. I love what I'm seeing from him as a coach because the offense is starting to put it together yes. against some weaker competition. But the next eight games, I'm not going to like let that determine my opinion of Brad Larson. But it's a good opportunity for Brad Larson in these next eight games to really showcase how good he is as a coach. Oh, yeah. So I'm excited for him, too. Uh, good luck to the boys. Yeah. Um, I want to extend a quick congratulations to Sidney Crosby on 500 career goals. What an unbelievable Which, career, man. Dude, I'm surprised he didn't hit that sooner. <laughs> You know why? Because of all of his injury history, right? Oh, no, no that's, not, that's not what I was going to say. I was no? going to say he was waiting. Oh. You know he had to do it against the Flyers, right? Oh, yeah, that too. Yeah. Flyers are Washington, right? Dude, he's got 50. So, like, I saw, like, his goal chart, like, how many goals against each team, like, mm-hmm. all 32 in the NHL. Yep. Like, the number one team, the team who scored on the most – is the Flyers. He has 50 career goals against them. Oh. And that's just in the regular season. Mm-hmm. Did you see the, like, breakdown the Penguins PR had with um, all the assists by player? No. Uh, God, I mean, I'd have to assume either Malkin or Latang's number one. Gino's number one. Chris is number two. The jump between Chris Letang and number three, who is, I believe, Chris Kunitz. I was going to guess Kunitz. Is massive. Yeah. Well, it's because- actually like, it's mind blowing how big this gap is. When you think about it, because Kunitz hasn't played in several years and he, def- he hasn't been in Pittsburgh in several years. Um, Hold on. Okay. Honestly, he left Pittsburgh, what, 2015? Yes. Um, and also, he wasn't there the whole time because they didn't get him until the deadline in oh seven. No, they got him, they got him later than that because he won a cup in 07 with the Ducks. Uh, okay, okay, maybe they got him when they won a the cup in nine. Okay, yeah. so yeah. So I was like, damn, this this dude won two cups in three years with two different teams, right? Chris Kunitz, let me tell you that that's an underrated player. Underrated. Yes, he is. Him and Dupuy were like really, Dude, yeah, catalysts with Sid. And like, there there was a tweet from like NHL PR that was like, "Does Sid make these players better, or did they make him better?" And it's like, really, that's the question no, you're going to ask. <laughs> Sid was so gr- is so great that he, you know I, Chris Kunitz was already already a solid player. Yes, but. Chris Kunitz became better under Sid the same way that Dupuy went from just kind of a bottom six guy in the league, mm-hmm. a bottom six guy in the league. And they, they played him with Sid and then he improves his game so much. And so did Kunitz mm-hmm. that they could take him off of Sid's line and they would still produce and they would because drive. He made them better like, yeah. players. And that's what he's still doing that to this day with Brian Rust and Jake Gensel and yeah, they don't. Gensel like, doesn't yeah. need to play with Sid. Well, no, Rust doesn't need to play with Sid. They're they're unbelievable when they do. Oh yeah, they, they, they like they create offense on their own now. That's just the magic of Sidney Crosby. It's just it's how unbelievable he is. 
I wanted to touch on these uh, just real quick. We're going back to Columbus for a minute because I have I've had these tweets saved mm-hmm. for a while, and I keep forgetting to mention these. Um, from our guy Mark, uh, to give you an idea of how good a job I think Columbus has done in the past two drafts, consider my two cents here. One drafted six players that I think are near locks for the NHL: Kent Johnson, Cole Sillinger, Corson Coolmans, Yegor Chinnikov. Samuel Nasco and Stanislav Sposal. Yeah. Nasco is an interesting one, too. We don't talk about him a ton, but he's quietly putting together a really yeah. good season over there. Yeah, he is. Didn't he go to the uh, – he went to the World Juniors that got canceled. Yeah. And then I'm pretty sure – didn't he go to the Olympics, too? Did he get picked? I don't know if he did. I don't remember it. I know Sposal did. Marchenko yeah, and Baronkov went. Sposal was ridiculous in the few games that he was able to play in the World Juniors because he had those two ridiculous, like he had the one ridiculous goal, but he also had like the one ridiculous chance off the rush. Yeah. Um, and then number two, uh, in terms of defense, which can transition us into deadline stuff, honestly. Um mm-hmm. Drafted four defensemen in the same draft in 2021 that are looking strong. Those are Kulemans, Svozel, Guillaume Richard, and Makarov. Mm-hmm. Defense might be better off than we think. Yeah. In that case, defense is what Columbus still needs from this deadline. Mm-hmm. Defense and a backup goaltender. Well, I don't think you're going to be buying at the deadline. Probably not. I don't know if you're going to sell high either. I think they'll sell. They're not selling high. Like, there's been, like, you know, people are ridiculous on Twitter because, you know, Twitter is a toilet. But people are like, <laughs> let's go ahead and get Patrick Lanning. It's like the Blue Jackets are not selling Patrick Lanning, you idiot. They're going to extend him. I'm uh, not yeah. Worried. With the way Max Domi's that. playing, I don't. I don't want to see them sell them, but if they have to. Like, if if you want my honest opinion, I think the two, like, if you if I had to come up with two locks, these are two players I am confident will be traded at the deadline. Mm-hmm. I would say that I would expect Corpy and Kukin to be traded at the deadline. Kukin, huh? Kukin's on an expiring deal. Okay. And... and I think the way that he's played lately, you should be able to get a good piece for him. You can get some value, yeah. And I don't know if he's really a long-term part of your defensive core. I like him. I have no issues. I, I really have never had any well, issues. Th- no. But I, I just – I don't know. I think it, for, there's two reasons you trade him. One is because you get value out of it. Right. Okay. Yes. Two is it opens up a spot. Yeah, yeah, it, it, and I and this season is so important for giving opportunity to see what guys have. I, I want to see what do we have in Gabriel Carlson? Yes, we, we saw some Gabe earlier this year. You know, he scored a goal on my birthday, <laughs> um, but then he got sent back down pretty early on, and he's been down ever since. Mm-hmm. And it's just like he's never really gotten a shot to play with the big boys. Now they won't get really anything out of him. I could also, I'm not going to put a lock on it, but I could also very much see them trading Harrington getting like a conditional sixth. Yeah. I, I just like when it comes to seven, eight guys like that, I don't care as much. <laughs> well, I don't care either, but I, I think it's just you trade them because their contracts are expiring. You can, if you can get any asset out of them, just do it. And, you know, it, it opens up opportunities for young players. Here's the thing. You, you trade away Harrington and um, Kukin. That's two guys that you get rid of. One spot opens up. This gives an opportunity for either Carlson or Christensen. Christensen, yeah. I think Christensen's interesting. He's a very interesting player. 
He's what he's one that we did get to see a little bit of, and he looked really good. I thought, yeah, I thought he looked fine, and I, and you know, I've heard good things about him in in Cleveland. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't mind giving him an opportunity because I mean, he, he was undrafted. They just signed right. him. God, if he could be a part of your defensive core, wouldn't that be something? Um, yeah, I think so. This deadline is highlighted by three different sweepstakes and none of which I don't really see Columbus in Mm -hmm. the one that's making the rounds again right now is Ben Sherratt which I have no idea why (laughs) absolutely none because teams are actually interested in trading like legitimate assets for this guy. First rounders for this guy. <laughs> Do you know what his war percentage this season is? What? It's like guess. It's like three. Jake, you just guessed three. It's too high. No way. Oh my god. Like I knew I okay. I knew Montreal was having an abysmal year, but like, what? Dude, it's like, here's the thing about him. Even when they like made that weird run last year, his whole percentage was 23%. And the year before that, he was 22. Like this guy's just not been good. (laughs) Oh, wow. I, Montreal fans don't like him, and teams are just like, yeah, we'll give you a first-round pick for him. Like, why? <laughs> oh, and touch him with a 10-foot pole. Wait. I... And he's been playing, what, middle? He's been playing top four, like second pair of yeah. minutes? He has been. He's been playing top pair of minutes. Top pair and minutes? Cooper doesn't deserve to be playing oh. top, ten, top pair minutes. That just makes me feel bad for Alexander Romanov. I yeah, feel bad for any defenseman who's had to play for him. Like, oh. So, like, and I mean, you know, you hear it all the time because Toronto is Toronto, right? It's like, oh, this, Toronto's going to get it. No, they're not. Kyle Dubas is not going after Ben Sherratt. Even with even with the issues with Justin Hall, even with the back and forth that is the purgatory that Travis Dermott is in, they just got Ilya Labushkin for defensive depth and very, very solid actual defense. Like... Justin Hall's interesting. I've never seen. I don't know if he said his tweet about it. What Jay Fresh said yesterday it was it was hilarious because I was oh, dying sure at it. it. I I'm sure it was. Because it, really like sweet. I agreed with him a hundred percent about it. Uh-huh. So, um, he said to be honest, I have never seen such fiery opinions about as average of a player as Justin Hall. <laughs> Well, because, like, you see him play with Dermot, and they've played well together in the past, and then he gets his game elevated when he's with Jake Muzzin, and yet you still watch him by himself. And he's becoming more and more of a non-option, kind of like what's going on with Corpusalo, where it's like the team around him is fine when he's there, but and he does okay, but you're just not getting anything with him. With Hall? Yeah. He's interesting because, like, so his war percentage has actually gone up this year, but, like, and his defense has gone up, but he provides nothing offensively. He makes and too speaking, many silly mistakes. Yeah. He, he takes way more penalties than he draws. Um, he's all right on the PK, but 
he doesn't provide he just doesn't provide anything offensively and, and his transitions he's not great transition he's just so he's, he's a weird defenseman he's a weird defenseman in a lot of reasons and, and, and here's the thing like, like my my thing is I feel bad for him in a sense because he is playing se- second pair minutes yes he, he is your he is your fourth defenseman in in you know, if you're Most cases. At, in no circumstances should he be. No. It's He's, because of a lack he should of be, he, Yeah, he should be six, seven. He should be six. This, it wouldn't be an issue. Like, this is a guy that you're paying $2 million to. You're not going to have an issue with this guy if he's playing third pair minutes. No. It's not so much that he's, you know, not good enough. It's more so that you just look at. He's, he's being relied on too much. Together. I test stats, analytics, put it all together, and look at the general results. He's fine. He's being relied on too much. The he's deployment much. is an issue. This is it's a significant issue. It's not his fault that he's being relied on so much. No. But, it's you know, just they, limited. yeah. It's just how he is. I, I just don't know why they rely so much on him, and, and they had this just. And Ben Sherratt's not your answer. And you're not Ben Sherratt's nowhere close to your answer. You need a right hand shot defenseman. You, yeah. you need someone who can help defensively. Ilya Labushkin can do that. Yeah, Labushkin's interesting. I, I like that they got him. Yeah, um, and they dumped uh, Richie for that, which you know. <laughs> It's Richie was cumbersome. He wasn't help, He wasn't doing what he was signed to do at all. Uh, and they freed up a lot of space with that two and a half. So Labushkin's interesting because you know his, his war percentage has dropped over the years. But the reason that it's dropped has nothing to do with his defense. So it's all, it's he, all offense. He yes, provides zero offense. <laughs> He is in the this year he's in the four percentile offensively. Last year he was in the twelfth percentile. Last year he's at seventy eight percent defense. This year he's at 90, 98. So he's good defensively. Yes. The reason that his WAR percentage was ninety three percent in 2019-20 is because his his uh, defense was ninety three percent and his offense was ninety two percent. Oh my god. He just had like an absurd high finishing percentage that year. So this guy doesn't provide really anything up. So that he does take more penalties than than he draws. I mean, he's um, played in over 150 career games and has what, like 18 goals? Yeah. So, like, do trust me. Like, there's there, and and that's the other thing that helps with this war percentage in the 1920 season is the small sample size. Yeah. So, I think generally speaking, if you look at the entire sample size of his his career, this is a guy who provides absolutely no offense at all. But that's okay. He's just shut because down they need defense. Yeah. He's a shutdown defenseman. He's reliable. That's a guy you can put on your third pair who is reliable. And, th- and this is what makes it tough. I like the acquisition of him because mm-hmm. I like his defense, but it doesn't solve the Justin Hull problem because he's going to be sucking up that spot on the third defensive pair, which is ideally where you would want to play Hull. Yes. So if you're going to make an improvement, if you're the Toronto Maple Leafs and you want a legitimate right-hand shot defenseman. Sandy on Labushkin second- on your second pair? I Maybe. no, I think you keep Labushkin on your third pair, and I think you have to explore trading a hole for another defenseman. You're gonna have to include picks or prospects, but if you want to solve that issue, it's the easiest way to do it. Well, then let's address this then. Travis is right now seven eight. I would keep him. Well, you know that th- that could be the answer to your problem. Trade Travis with Hull. You know how much we love Dermot. Like I be, like him a lot because he's. Like, would, you know, wouldn't you take him in the Blue Jackets right now? I would love Travis Dermot. Are you kidding me? Yeah, I would take him on the Jackets in a heartbeat. I mean, again, we've loved him since he was an Otter. Yeah. <laughs> but I like, like his game. Yeah, um, he he makes mistakes every now and again, really costly yeah. ones, unfortunately. But yeah. like 
<laughs> I think you can live with them, though. But it's like, you're, you're really... Thing, you can live with them if you're a team like the Blue Jackets. The problem is the Maple Leafs, with where they're at, they can't afford to live with them. Because, I, I sorry to say it, they're a fragile team. Yeah. I mean, they could have won game six. We have series. We have Leaf fans that, you know, listen to this. Hi, guys. <laughs> yeah, um, no, and, and they're aware of it. They're aware yeah. of it. They know it. They're, they're not going to disagree. I'm not trying to dunk on them. I'm just, it, it's, it's the God's honest truth where I think they're so talented and they are well constructed. If they just get over the damn hump and they just win a series. They, they, they just get, they get that out of the way. They could it's, win a cup. It's always really it's little things like cup. this, right? Yes. It's just, you just got to do it. But there's always something, isn't there? It's like, okay, we need bona fide right shot D. Okay, now we need to fix the, you know, long-term muzzin problem mm-hmm. that's more immediate right now. It's with... <laughs> It's always something that comes back to depth and defense <laughs> with this yeah. team. More often, but here's the thing: it's not. Do you know what else? It's been talked about at times, but and Columbus it's, too. In the regular season, is the top guys. Nobody talks about it as an issue now because every single time in the regular season, the top guys they show up in the regular season and they don't. Yeah. They should they should go for about the first four games of the playoffs. And they play well. They have to win some games. Mm-hmm. And then when push comes to shove and they need that all important fourth and final win of a series, they're ghosts. Right. Or in, in the case of the Columbus series, the the uh the third win of the series, to uh-huh. put it away. They're ghosts. They're ghosts, they make really they get too much pressure on them. They make too many little mistakes, uh, i.e. Mitch Marner puck over the glass. Yeah. And, or Travis Dermott's weird little spinorama with the, uh, I want to say that was Kakiyemi's goal. Mm-hmm. I just like, they, they, they overthink too much when the pressure's this high. The problem is I just, for them, I don't know what right hand shot defenseman they could get. It's not Ben Sherratt. Full stop. He's not even not right. Yeah. So it's like, but like, 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 who, who with one year left on their contract could realistically be traded? Justin Braun is he a second pair defenseman? Uh, not anymore. Not really. You might. Here's the thing: if you the the, the, the top right hand shot defenseman on the market mm-hmm. is John Klingberg, but he doesn't solve your problem right. offensively. He's 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 gifted offensively. Yes, absolutely. He he's always been gifted offensively, but we, we've always known you for have years now so much offense in your defense core right now already. Like you don't need more. So you don't that. need him. So I'm, like, I'm looking at this list of right now, like the top guys to, who, who are on like the trade watch list. Okay, number one is is Jacob Chikrin, but you'd have to give up a ton for him. Mm-hmm. Left hand shot, they're so not going to do. That. Yeah. Okay. So Klingberg's listed at four. The next top defenseman who's a left hand shot but could, but does play the right side would be Calvin DeHaan. Um, Calvin's fine. He's fine. I mean, I like Calvin. I don't have issues as a player. He's, he's been good defensively. Offensively, he's average. I don't know what you have to give up for to Chicago to get him, but probably. You know who's listed like... at number nine? Who? Jeff Petrie. Oh. Oh. But then again, yeah, I, I forgot guess, about Jeff Petrie. Mm-hmm. Do you know who the next top? Defenseman is listed as listed uh, at 18th on this list of guys who could get traded at the deadline. Hmm. Christmas or Salina. Oh, already? 
Yeah. <laughs> well, think about it. I mean, because they traded for him with only one year left on his deal with the right. hopes that he was going to improve and they could extend him, but they're dog shit. Mm. And I don't think they're going to extend him now. So, so why <laughs> – you might as well just trade them and see what assets you can get for them. But that that's a bust of a trade for the for the Flyers. Uh talk a little bit more defense for like five seconds, and then we're gonna go transition to the next couple sweepstakes because I gotta yeah. finish my coffee. <laughs> I just I'm looking at it and I don't know like another guy who who could become available is is Nick Letty, but he's struggled this year. He doesn't solve any of those issues. I, I honestly think he's worse than both Dermott and and Hall. Um, uh, he's been good in the past, but but has struggled lately. I don't think that that's an option. Um, again, trading in division is going to be tough. Brett Kulak could maybe be an, an interesting option, but then again, okay. he's another third pair defenseman. Uh, the problem is this deadline, man. Do you know this deadline's who, weird? Do you know who's the best defenseman available that I think that, that wouldn't be it would be expensive. It wouldn't be absurdly expensive. Um, but I think could be worthwhile for them. For Toronto? For Toronto. Okay. Um he's he has his his numbers have dipped this year, but I do think change of scenery could help him also not playing him on the top pair if you put him on the second pair oh. maybe kick the tires on Hampus Lindholm Ooh, that's an option yeah I like he's only I like one Hampus. year left he will be a UFA so you you, you know if, if you're giving up say a Travis Dermott to make it happen because another option could just be keeping Hall and keeping him as, as an option for the third pair uh-huh. and, and just trying to shore up your top two pairs. So you bump guys down. If, if you're to trade Dermot and picks say, you know, I don't know when their next first rounder is this year. I don't know if they have, do they have their first rounder this year? I don't know. I don't know. Whatever picks necessary along with Travis Dermot, I think could be worthwhile for both teams. We're a blue jackets um, podcast. We don't know everything Leafs as much as we're talking strictly Leafs right now. But I think it's interesting, like with the lease. I think he could be an, an interesting option. I know his numbers are dipped, but he's playing top pair minutes on on Anaheim. It's not an easy situation there. Right. Um could be an option. Could be. But it's just like this is the thing, man. I'm looking at this whole entire list. And I'm like, damn, there's just not a lot of defense like legit defenseman you could trade for if you're toronto now there's there's other teams that could could make plays for let's for bring this to guys. columbus real quick like yeah you know shore up i think you know like i said with the tweet from mark the defense is better than it looks mm-hmm. pipeline wise yes but like so we have Wierenski bokvist Right. Yes. Uh, Gavrikov, peak, mm-hmm. or you know, your top five defensemen are Wierenski, Gavrikov, Bofist, Peak, and Bean. Yes, the sixth spot is the sixth spot, and you know, I like Peak. I. I don't know how much you want to invest in peak. Well, here's the, here's a good thing. I don't have to worry about signing him for another year. Cause there's, uh, you know, they put their money on bean to be yeah. a good development piece. They put their money in on Boki to be a very good development piece. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, you have Z kicking in being your number one for years to come. Uh, Gavrikov, I don't know how long he's signed for. He's gonna, he has another year in his deal. He has another year. Okay. So you at least have him until through next year. Yeah. <clears throat> really, as far as the next couple of years go on defense for Columbus, they're okay. They're fine. Um, I don't know what they want to do in the offseason as far as 
signings concern. But the concern for Columbus the top four is, is good. yeah, the concern for Columbus really is a backup job. You've got your number one defenseman, Zach Wierenski. You know, you've got a, a, a really good second pairing defenseman on the left side in Garikov. I think you've got a really good right-hand shot defenseman in, in Bokvist. I don't know if he's a top pair minutes guy yet. Not he yet. Could be. I think he could be, but, but regardless, even if he's just a second pair guy, he's so damn good offensively. Oh, yeah. Um, Bean and Peek are interesting. They're young. Mm-hmm. You, know, you know, there's, there's, there's development in their game that needs to be, needs to be done. Yes. Uh, Bean defensively peak offensively. Uh, yeah. But, 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 you know, the, the, the talent's there, no doubt about it. <clears throat> and they don't have to worry about signing either of those guys. So, so that's not an issue for them this off season. Right. But yeah, like you said, like the goaltending is interesting because I do think they're going to trade Corpus Allo. Which uh, let's, uh, you know, we've talked Sherratt. Let's talk Marc-Andre Fleury. So the good thing. I doubt Mark- they're in on Marc-Andre Fleury. <laughs> Blue Jackets? Yeah. No, there's, there's no way in hell they're in on Fleury. Uh, no. But. Fleur is interesting because it's up to him. Yes. And we've already, we've seen the rumors. We've seen those shut down that the, the Vegas reunion isn't happening. That the relationship's still sour there. And Washington has tried to trade for him. Dear Jesus. <laughs> no way in hell that's happening. That's so funny. <laughs> uh, I can't even express to you in words just how hilarious. Oh, just well, it's like with Lundqvist in a Capitals uniform too, right? It's like it would look the strangest and most like betraying. Ugh. Here's the the tough thing. I think in their heart of hearts, the Penguins would want it want to do it. Yes, because Casey DeSmith has been a liability this year. And I don't Flurry, think that, they, have no, oh. they have no issues giving up prospects or picks to, to help them try and win another cup. But the problem is they're in a little bit of a desperation mode, a one more go round mode. I think I think for, for the Penguins, they don't want to put Tristan Jerry in a tough spot. Right. Because you know how it goes. They go into the playoffs, he's their guy. They they have fully they are fully invested in Tristan Jari as their starting goaltender. He is yes. he is their guy. If he has one bad playoff start, what immediately happens? If Everybody in Pittsburgh is chanting for Flurry. Yes. <laughs> and I I think I don't, I don't think they want to put that on him because that would shoot down Jari's confidence. That would put a lot of pressure because. Flurry, we know at this point in his career, he's got one last hurrah, mm-hmm. right? Like if he doesn't retire after this year, even if he, you know, does the one day contract with the Penguins kind of thing or a one day contract with Vegas, yeah, whatever happens with that, right? He's basically about done unless he really feels like he can continue on as a backup for half of another season or something. You know what I'm kind of confused by? Because it's like he's got, like, you watch him play and he's got gas in the tank. Yeah. So I'm looking at this, and, and they, they mentioned, like, the teams that are reportedly linked to each player. So the two teams linked to Flurry are Washington and Colorado. That's totally understandable. He's Colorado not go- would be fun. <laughs> Colorado would be fun. But, you know, why isn't Edmonton in on him? I was going to say, yeah, because I've heard – that they were and then they weren't or at least that they should be they should be because you know you know with flurry part of the deal is going to be because it's an expiring contract that chicago is going to eat half the salary so it'd be 3.5 million on the cap well miko koskin is 4.5 you could trade koskin in with picks and prospects to get him right because koskin's deal is coming up 
up to an end. So like that, that doesn't matter to Chicago. They're just going to dump them at the end of the year anyway. Mm-hmm. They only care about, you know, getting assets out of it. Right. And it would be a worthwhile experiment for the, for the, the Blackhawks because they gave up nothing to get Flurry in the first place. So if they could trade him at the deadline and get assets out of it, they just got assets for free, essentially. Pretty much. God, that trade is still so weird to me. Mm-hmm. The initial Flurry trade. <laughs> yeah. Ugh. Like I'm looking at at teams that, that are interesting for for like goaltending. So nobody in the Atlantic, Florida is fine in that. Tampa, mm-hmm. Toronto, Boston, they're all good. Yeah. Metro, Carolina's good. Pittsburgh, you know, I mean, like but, Pittsburgh and New York could use better backup goaltenders, but I don't know if it's right. Georgiev, yeah, Georgiev's on the market potentially. But he, uh, but here's the other thing: he wouldn't go to the Rangers. That too. So, like, Pittsburgh, I don't think they'd want to do it because they don't want to put that pressure on Tristan. Mm-hmm. Um, he wouldn't go to the Rangers. He wouldn't go to the, the Cap. He wouldn't go in any team in the Metro, I don't think. Probably not. Uh, the Islanders are out of it, more or less. And he wouldn't go there, right? He wouldn't go there either. Yeah. Like, generally speaking, I don't think he would want to go to any team that's in the Metro. I don't even, like, there's not, like, a huge rivalry between them and Carolina. I don't even think he'd want to go there if that was an option. Which I don't think it would be, but I mean, uh, no, because Carolina's fine. <laughs> yeah, Carolina's fine, but I'm looking at teams in the West that are competing for a playoff spot. Well, Minnesota is fine in that with with Talbot, Talbot and, Kak- and Kakinen, Yes. Um, St. Louis is fine in that because I mean, they you know, as much team, as we dog on Jordan Bennington, like he's not having a great year, but they locked in on him. But it, it, they're Philly Husto, so like Philly's that, still in his job. <laughs> Like, like, what are you going to do? Trade him while he's playing this way? Hell no. Um, Calgary is unbelievable in that. Calgary is just fine. You know, he doesn't want to go back to Vegas. Right. I mentioned Edmonton. Nashville's doing just fine with, with UC Saros. Mm-hmm. LA, I think they like what they got in, in Peterson. And, and also, Quick's been playing well this year. Quick has been really renaissance in his career. Over the last couple like of years, every time he's starting to go down, he has one of those. Yeah, there have been a couple of times where I thought his career was going to finally start to dip. Like, because this this year I'm looking. So let's just look at his his numbers. Mm-hmm. 2018. So this was the year after they made the playoffs and lost in the first round to the Golden Knights. Okay. okay? 46 games, 888 save percentage. Next year, 42 games, 904. Next year, 22, 898. This year in 29, 911. Yeah. And his goal average is 261. That's definitely like, yeah, that's um, that's a hard improvement. So he's just he's he's found a way to to get back up there and But yeah, it's like Flurry's Flurry's available. Who? Now it's interesting with Cal Peterson because they extended him, but his numbers have been rough this year. So I don't I don't think they'll give up on him just because of one down year, but no. I mean, it would be interesting if they did. <laughs> Literally, like I don't know why. I'm just defaulting to Edmonton because that's like the only one that really makes a lot of sense. It makes and, yeah. perfect sense. They, have a, they don't have any goalies. <laughs> they have goalies. They have physical goalies, but they don't have yes. goalies. <laughs> Stuart Skinner got sent back down. I mean, Mike Smith is 40. <laughs> Miko yeah. Koskinen is not yeah. good. <laughs> Literally, Edmonton's the only one that really makes any sense, and I don't know why they're sense. not. Yeah, yeah, I, I, they just just do it. Uh, just yeah. As much as like this is a one track mind kind of mindset, it's just like it's the only way. It, it's 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 like uh, it's um, uh, Palpatine, right? Kill him. It's the only way. <laughs> I yeah. So Flurry, if he sticks in Chicago, that's gonna be such a whimper to the end of his career. It is. 
Now I know that he he would he might want to just stay in Chicago because of his family, but I don't know. It's weird. Yeah. Because uh, I don't know. Like, like after this year is done, is he even gonna play anymore? We don't know. We have no idea. God, how weird would that be? A league with no Mark Andre Fleury in it. It's like an NFL without Tom Brady, right? Yeah. It's very, very strange. Very strange. Um <laughs> The last sweepstakes, per se, is the one that, like, has been circling around all season long, and this is Claude Giroux. Yeah. He's going to be an av. Yeah. It's very – it's the most likely scenario that he's going to Colorado. I feel like it's the worst-kept secret in the league. It's pretty much almost a lock. I don't no. know – who else would be in the market for him? <laughs> Florida. <laughs> Florida, maybe. Either one. Either one of those teams. Good. Could you imagine either of those teams in Claude Giroux on? Oh. Well, I kind of can't because it's like, you know, he's been there his whole career. And the way, like, as much as it's a down season, can you really see him wearing any other jer- It's like we've talked about this with certain other players that are franchise guys like Crosby, like Malkin, like yeah. Latang. It's like, weird to see them, any of them. In like, o- like Ovechkin, you know, imagine that. Like, that's I've been, not happening. I've been imagining Giroux in an ab uniform for about, like, the last month. Mm-hmm. So I'm, like, starting to get used to it. <laughs> <laughs> also, he looks sick in an abs jersey, man. It'd be unbelievable. 28 on the avalanche. Oh. But here's the thing, man. Ain't no excuses that you get this dude. But then where do you put him? Do you put him on the wing? I don't know. You figure it out. Because, I mean, like, God, okay. Oh, imagine, you, <laughs> imagine your center depth is like McKinnon, Kadri, Giroux, Comfer. Mm-hmm. Or, you know, swap Drew and Kadri. I don't know. Let's, let's look at this this roster. Because, yeah. Because um, <laughs> we're also forgetting that they have Burkowski and, <laughs> and Nachuskin. Oh, they, they do have Bur and Nachuskin on the wings. And also yeah. Alex Newhook. And Newhook. Uh, yep. And Tyson. Abe Kubel. And Tyson Jost. No, so the first line, like, like here's the thing. I, I would keep still the Rocky keep... Mountain line because that is the yeah. line. McKinnon, Landis Gog, and Ranton, and keep them together. Honestly, put a second line together of Kadri, Giroux, and Burkowski. Yo. Put Newhook with Nachuskin and. Jost, maybe? Let me think here. Nachuskin. New hook and obey Kubel, and then put okay. Comfer with Jost, and maybe put him with Helm. I forgot they had Darren Helm. Either or Logan O'Connor, either one of them would work. Huh. God, yeah. that's well because we did a standings watch last episode, and they had, they are so far ahead of everybody already in the West. Mm-hmm. Like, literally, they have a nine... When we checked, they had a nine-point gap on Minnesota. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that's... Has that changed? Has that grown? It's up to 11 now. (laughs) At least last time I checked. That's so goofy. Yep, they're up by 11. But then again, they also have three games at hand, so Minnesota could close that gap. I mean, they're not going to catch up. No! Yeah. There's no way in hell Minnesota's going to come even close to, like, making that even a tight race. Because Colorado's just so damn good. (sighs) Because Colorado struggled out the gate this year. Like, in the first, like, two weeks of the season, they struggled a bit. And McKinnon went down. They've been dominant. (laughs) Yeah. They've literally, they've just been nonstop. McKinnon went down. They didn't have Francois for the longest time. Darcy was struggling. Yeah. Jonas Johansson was really struggling. 
No excuses at all for them to lose in the playoffs. No. It's cup or bust. It's cup or bust in Colorado, for sure. And, I mean, if they get Giroux, which still would look weird to me, Mm -hmm. as much as, you know, the relationship might be fraying, because it's that's another one where it's up to Claude, right? Yeah. And at the end of the day, man, I don't know. I don't understand because he's gonna be a free agent anyways. Is he gonna is he gonna go right back to Philadelphia? He might. I don't know. Yeah, is he but... just rented out for the playoffs and then he goes back? Yeah, that's an option. But at the end of the day, man, like it also goes into like how much he thinks he has left in his career. Mm-hmm. I just don't see any reason for him to stay. Which is a shame when you think about the, you know, the connection aspect of it. Yeah. But when you think about the hockey player and his, you know, the, the ultimate goal, which is winning the Stanley Cup. I don't see why you don't move. Mm-hmm. Especially with the way Giroux's career is gone. Right. He's done everything he can do except for win a Stanley Cup. He needs it. Like his career is going to be unbelievable even if he doesn't win it. And nobody's going to hold it against him if he doesn't win it. But I was, I was just watching a video on, you know, Marcel Dion. Mm-hmm. And it's like, that's one of the craziest careers without a cup. Yeah, and Giroux is in that conversation too. Like it, as of now, <clears throat> and it's crazy because like you think about a player of his caliber coming into the league and how good he was immediately, and they get to the Stanley Cup Finals in 2010, and you just get this feeling as an athlete, like man, we're so close, but just how heartbreaking it is when you, yeah. And it's like they haven't been close since 2010. No. They've been nowhere close. Have they made it to a conference final since 2010? No. Because remember, they got swept uh, the next year. In the second round? Yes. Boston. The huge revenge sweep. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't since then I haven't seen anything because it's, th- you know they have the back and forth of yeah. making it and not, and then there's this year that's breaking that pattern, but mm, no. I don't no. I don't I don't see it. Yeah. So, so I don't I don't know what there's st- yeah. It's just, it, it's tough because I understand that he's like, you know, flyer for life and everything like that. And he, he's everything that you, he embodies everything about a Philadelphia flyer right. and throughout the course of his career. But he, he won't give, give him a chance, send him to Colorado. And then it's going to be interesting to see what the future holds for him after that. If they bring him back. Because I mean, they might, they might bring him back because he might just want to go back. Like if, like if he wins a cup, if he wins a cup, I'll go back. And finish his career in Philadelphia. Yeah. But if he doesn't, what are you gonna do? You gonna sign there again? And just accept essentially accept that you're not gonna win one? Oh man. Or do you try and run it back with a team that just trade for you, or do you just sign with another team in general? Like, I don't know. It's interesting for him. Yeah, it's such a weird place to be in <laughs> if you're clutch because you're just mm-hmm. like, man. Philly's my home, but Colorado right now has the best chance for me to actually finally get my win. And if they don't do it, then what the hell do I do? If they mm-hmm. do, I can go home happy. <sighs> yeah. That's going to be an interesting one to watch. Yeah. We've addressed pretty much all the storylines of this deadline, I think, now. Yeah. yeah, I mean, there's still a couple left with the Blue Jackets, but I think we can get to them. In a, in we can a probably do that the next episode, yeah. yeah. A couple smaller things. Uh, tough, A couple tough stories, and then we're going to end on a happy note. So 
good-ish news out of a badish situation. You remember the Jalen Samaritans? Yeah, we're not going to name the, the dude who did it. Uh, the player that caused this racial gesture, the IIHF has suspended him for a full calendar year. Good. That got announced like right before we started. Yeah, I saw that this morning. So that's good. I'm glad that happened. Don't have to worry about him. And now we can move on and never talk about him again. Right. I mean, not like we would have anyway. <laughs> Maybe a good player. Yeah. I mean, and, you know, I don't know how Smerick's been doing, how he's been like playing. I'm sure he's been okay. Yeah. I mean, I it's, a, it's, it's, he signed in the DEL. It's, yeah. He's playing. He's fine. Yeah. Just play a pro. Um, yeah. Another one. Uh, this one was weird. I got a notification from the athletic for this. Uh, and I mean, it's weird, but I'm guessing a decent step more or less in a good direction. Uh, Bobby Hall stepped down as an ambassador for the Blackhawks. They still have Chris Chelios. They still have um, somebody else. I can't remember off the top of my head. Do they say why? Scott Powers said in the article that they don't really know why. Hmm. I didn't see it. I'm not going to speculate. I, I hope don't, everything's yeah. going all right with him. I don't know why he did it, but I mean it's a personal decision. They yeah. they they said it was mutual, right? So I don't know how much it's tied to just a culture change. How much it's tied to the scandal stuff, mm-hmm. if any, right? And I don't want to speculate about it. So it seems as though. Sense. It seems as though Danny was the one on these talks, though, which is good. Yeah, make sure that Rocky's nowhere close to this team. Because they did, you know, they mentioned Danny by name, and I didn't even read anything about Rocky in the... They didn't say anything about Rocky in the article, which is good. Right. Okay. But it's very strange, because it's like... It's weird timing. Yeah. It's out of nowhere kind of out of nowhere and i was just like thinking he's been there for his whole life yeah the the golden jet man i'm assuming part of it has to do with uh you know just where he is in his life now too because like if he wants to do something else he's got the freedom to do that yeah yeah, like I said, I have no idea what's going on, but I hope everything's okay. I hope yeah. nothing too serious going on with it. If there's an update on that, maybe we'll we'll provide talk it. about it. Yeah. Yeah. Even if it's small, we can make a footnote of it later on. Just like, here's happens. what happened with Bobby and the Blackhawks, and sure. Uh good news story to end on. We didn't really, when this first happened, we didn't talk about the Nadia Pavici read uh, Hamilton story itself, did we? I don't believe we did. So, obviously, we all know what happened er- at this rate. Early in the season, Kraken, Canucks, uh, Nadia was behind the bench, noticed a growth on Red Hamilton's neck. Mm-hmm. Uh she's a nursing student she you know was trying to get his attention got his attention and you know said hey you should get that checked he did found out it was cancerous very serious condition and you know thank god for nadia stepping in the way she did Mm -hmm. because if it was any other kind of fan why would you listen (laughs) right Right, it was just some like heckler kind of fan, but like she knew what she was doing. Yeah, and then so so he ended up he's good, and then like he, he didn't know like who she was or anything like that, and then he ended up finding her through Kraken and Canucks Twitter. Yeah, 
like they all came together to find out who Nadia was to communicate that to Red. Yeah. And they put the message on the video board um, and all of that stuff. And then they eventually like met up and took pictures together and stuff like that. Yeah, it was cute. It was great. Yeah, no, it was adorable. It, it was it was sweet. It was one of the nicest things. It's one of like the few good <laughs> stories. <laughs> few very hockey. good stories about the National Hockey League this year. Yeah. And uh, you know they they played in Vancouver yesterday. Mm-hmm. The Kraken and the Canucks. Uh. Nadia was there, and she got a big thank you video. That that's really sweet. And you know, she got a really big thank you from the Seattle Kraken as they lost five to the Canucks. Oops. Can you have a goal seven seconds into Tyler Mott? Uh, yeah, it was a wild game, dude. It was a crazy, crazy yeah, game. The next score. They had Travis, they had the fourth line was just going off. Because it was you like Matthew Tyler, Highmore, Travis, Travis Kamen, Bo Horvat, and Taylor Pearson. Yeah. Vasily's what was funny was Pods' first goal in 16 games, and the last time he scored was the last game against the Kraken. Owner of the Kraken. <laughs> the silly pod goals and poor, poor, poor Chris Strieger, man, faced 45 shots. Yeah, oof. I was watching I was watching Twitter and I was seeing Allison live tweet about it and I was like, mm. Oh, I hope she's doing well. She's doing fine. She's doing her thing. Same yeah. same for like, you know, Everett Fitzhugh and JT Brown. They're doing fine. They just had their first all black broadcast against the Jets. How cool is yeah, that? Yeah, that was really cool. Very proud of them for that. Yeah. Because they're just really good at what they do. So. I mean, I should know with the connections to Everett. Right. <laughs> um, but yeah, the big, big ups to Nadia. I saw a picture, mm-hmm. you know, she was like Finn tweeted out a thing, right? Where they got to meet up. <laughs> I love Finn. He was he was holding up a thank you Nadia sign and it was cute. That's really cute. <laughs> no, that's good. It's one of the nice few feel good stories. One of the few good things that have come out of this Seattle Kraken season. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, and Leafs legend Jared McCann along with that. Yeah. <laughs> Just turn in the night there. Um Yeah, the Kraken haven't had a whole lot going for them this year, but it's like with the Nadia story, with uh, Jared McCann, with Jordan Eberle, because mm-hmm. Jordan's been playing just fine. Yeah. They have a few pieces that they can still, yeah. I'm surprised we didn't talk more about them with the trade deadline and like Giordano and stuff. Giordano's interesting. I haven't heard a ton about him, so it's, it's good that we wait on it because... I don't know where he's going to go. Yeah. I don't know. He got a yeah. nice touching tribute from Calgary and his return there. Where he should go. Oh, no. Toronto? No. Go back home. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> well, if you're going to trade with the deadline, I mean, you can always use more depth on defense. Oh, I'd imagine. Ugh. Anyway, yeah. Uh, big ups to Nadia uh, for Columbus. This next eight game stretch is huge. We'll talk more, you know, smaller deadline Columbus specific pieces. Mm-hmm. This was our deadline show. Really. Yeah. But we'll touch on some things on Saturday. All right. Sounds good. And we will see you all then, baby! Jay Jake Jackets, a podcast for fifth liners and all puckheads around. Follow the guys on Twitter at Snake Garinger, G A R R I N G E R, and at By Jay Ashdown. And subscribe on YouTube or wherever you listen. 
march on, march on.